I'm very interested in having anal sex with Gino. <laughs> At this point, I'm willing to try anything to get our sex life back on track. Some things just never change. I'm vegan, but I want your freaking meat. Give me the meat. I want it. Hey guys, Gino and Jasmine, they're back in season six before the 90 days. And they're already arguing day one of Gino being back in Panama. I really wanted to cook a goddamn vegan food for you! Wait a minute, hang on. How did this even happen? Let's rewind. Peel it. No, I need a cutting board. I will not do it on the plate. If you don't have a cutting board, I can't do it. But I'm not gonna cook without the proper equipment. Just because I asked you to peel a few potatoes. Something tells me this is not about the vegetables. Where to start with this one? The cringe baby talk. Who's my pretty bonita? Me. Bonita, <laughs> this transactional love. $2,500. How about the vegan that's got a beg for me? Do you want me? Papi, do you want me? I'm asking you that. Or the family that thinks it's just about a green card. The jealousy. You have something with a waitress. All things to look forward to with this couple. So let's go ahead and look at where it all started and then we'll catch up to where we're up to in season six. Let's have a look. So Gino met Jasmine on an international online dating system. And I wonder what kind of online dating site they met on. Cause here's Gino, here's Jasmine. I have questions. And we do know that Gino has dated sugar babies in the past as it's one of their many, many, many fights that they have during the show. Right from the get-go, when Gino and Jasmine even first started meeting each other, Gino brought a toothbrush as a present. The toothbrush? I probably should have waited Christmas to give it to you, but I was so excited to give it to you. So that's the Christmas gift you plan? Yeah. <laughs> but it should be the thought that counts, except for the fact that technically it's right around Christmas time and Jasmine was expecting a little bit more. So after all night of thinking about it, she decides to gift herself something. I just planned a four day trip to an amazing island here in Panama. She decides to gift herself a vacation worth two and a half grand, I'm assuming that's just the accommodation. She gonna need some spending money too, so take that into account. Her reasoning for this is he spent more than that on previous girlfriends. You were going out, you were going to trips, you took no. one of these bitches, you took her to Europe. Jasmine definitely wants to be top dog. And Gino seems very happy to oblige, at least in the start. You're worth it to me, so I'll do it. Opinion. That's how I like it. <laughs> I discovered something that really pissed me off. How long have you been divorced, babe? About eight, eight years. Mm. Oh, there's nothing attractive about jealousy and that's riddled in this relationship. Jasmine's angry that Gino's ex-wife from eight plus years ago, by the way, still has his last name. It's another little section of controlling slash jealousy just right here. It's not really his decision. You can't divorce someone and then say, hey, that's my last name. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back. It's not, it doesn't really work like that. You can just, you could ask if you wanted to, but it would seem weird. So I can't see many people doing it. In saying that, I don't fully blame her for not trusting him. It seems like he kind of does a hide a few details. What is this? about legal end. You think I remember everything I did six years ago? Now Gino hasn't been perfect either. He's been texting exes, don't know why. What? No, I'm sorry, I did not do that. Do not let Gino anywhere close to the casino because he has zero poker face. That was the worst lie. <laughs> <laughs> so explain this to me because this is just a screenshot and I have never sent these notes to anyone but just to you. Okay. Look! So Jasmine's really upset. One, her trust is betrayed. Fair enough. 
You should never send intimate photos of your partner to anybody else. That's for you and if they want to put it in Playboy, that's it. <laughs> oh, don't take things out on the toothbrush, she didn't do anything. Not only is she mad about the fact Gino's completely broken her trust, at least on this occasion, there's probably more in reality, but she also never thought of him as someone who was desperate and old and have to pay for attention to company. Which is weird because I thought most of us did. Communication just keeps coming up as a problem that's just constantly through this relationship. I told him like a thousand times, I don't eat any animal products. But he doesn't listen. So Jasmine is very much a vegan, which means no eggs. Would you like uh, two? Gino? That includes eggs. Wait, wait for him to, wait for that to process. Wait for it, wait for it. Okay, so, okay, I didn't know, okay, so now I know. Um. Now you got it. I knew you'd get there, buddy. I, I believed in you. So Jasmine's not the only one feeling unheard. Jasmine doesn't listen to me a lot of times when I try to speak to her. Like it goes in one ear and out the other. So many issues in these shows would be resolved if people would just communicate with each other instead of being swept up in I love you and this is so magical and blah blah. If they actually just stop for one second, one second, not the whole time, one second, and just communicated their wants and desires so many things would have been avoided, but that wouldn't make good reality TV, so continue. <laughs> My friends were all the stripper I didn't know was in shock. You know, no problem. It's weird to be cool with strippers when it's for you, but it's not okay for your partner to tip a waitress. Oh, baby, I don't give any tips in Panama. Did I mention guilt tripping before? Because if I didn't, I apologize. Here it is. I stopped listening to you like five minutes ago. Do whatever you want. It was so good until now. You ruined everything. You pissed me off. Even Jazz admits that sometimes, sometimes they're toxic. But it's love, so they go on for it. Of course they're gonna get married. Why wouldn't they? And she said yes. <laughs> What comes with marriage in this show? Prenups. Did you ever bring up the prenup to her again? I know it didn't go very well the first time you talked to her about it. Did you know that Gino was considering a prenup before you got married? I'm not signing up any prenup. Whenever you see Gino's family, there's this level of awkwardness. Because obviously they don't want to hurt his feelings. I just think that you need to stick up for yourself more. Yeah. Yeah, I hear ya. She's gonna respect you. Yes. Ha! Yeah. She's gonna respect you. Oh. So one of the reasons that Gino's family isn't too welcoming towards Jasmine is they're under the impression she just wants a green card and then she's just gonna love him and leave him and go. If I'm in the United States and we get married and he is screwed up, he, I'm gonna kick him out of the house and I'm gonna stay with everything. And honestly, she never really tries to defend that. Like even a little bit. She's actually thinking about getting him to write up a will just in case anything happens to him before they're married. So with that, I think it's very unlikely she's gonna accept the prenup talk this time. I noticed she got a new apartment. Yeah. Do you pay for all that stuff? Uh, well, you know, uh, I've helped out. So Gino helps to pay for Jasmine's expenses, including her new lease of the apartment, which just happens to be the same complex as her ex-partner. Can you say keeping your options open? So he's paying for her apartment and it is a nice apartment. For 3000 a month, it should be. So her reasoning for the expensive rental being okay is Gino said the K-1 visa process shouldn't be that much longer so it's only for a small amount of time. So it's, it's not like I'm gonna stay here forever. With that logic, wouldn't you want to get a cheaper apartment knowing it's not that long? Use the extra money that you'd be saving on your future? I do know she loves Gino and I know Gino definitely loves Jasmine but there's 
I wouldn't call her a gold digger. I would just say she's got gold digger qualities. It's like a little sprinkling of gold digger on top. And I think it actually stemmed from a level of controlling more than anything else. Now he points out that he's a little worried that Jasmine's not going to like his place back in Michigan, America. And rightly so. Look at his house compared to her current rental. She's definitely not going to like that. What, what are you doing? Give her a crappy apartment there so she'll be super excited for your American place. But we have to live based on our budget. You want to try the bed to see how like you like it? I like how Gino voices his concern about budgets and money and spending and she just goes straight over that. Hey, do you want to go sit in the distraction? I mean, sit in the bed. Let's test it out. I'm not wearing a bra. Okay. You going to feel? Classic manipulation. I'm just trying to enjoy the feel, enjoy the bed, the com feel how comfortable it is. The intimacy just keeps coming off as an issue. I know Jasmine feels that there's not enough sex in our relationship. Don't get me wrong, sex is important. I'm not saying it's not. It's important to me too. But after seeing her spending habits and how she's getting a little pushy with me to get what she wants, it's not making me feel good about our future together when that affects my sexual desire. Gino cannot finish when they're together. He has to go by himself. And at first you think, I wonder if that's to do with age or is it the fact that he's just Gino? Because that makes sense too. But then the more you look at it, the more you realize Gino's harboring this all this anxiety and stress. He wants to talk about the prenup. He wants to talk about finances. He's unsure about so many things and the fact that they argue a lot. So it makes sense that he's having trouble with any kind of intimacy. Mm -hmm. You see Jasmine's very sexually open. She's very confident and she knows what she wants. Gino really comes across as a teenager who's just discovering sex, just the idea of it. And judging from before he even met Jasmine, this is him at the drugstore looking like an absolute fish out of water. It makes a lot of sense that intimacy is one of their problems. It really does. Now when I said Jasmine was willing to do just about anything to get the intimacy where she'd like it, that includes some surgery right up in there. Mm -hmm. I actually do like that Jasmine's really open when it comes to sexually and what she wants. I mean it might be a little bit of TMI but Better be safe than sorry. I mean, she's with the doctor. At least she can pick his brain from even just how he reacts. He is a doctor and he is a man. So at least he can give some insight is why they're having the issue that they're having. Although Jasmine's under the impression that they're fighting because they're not being intimate. And that could be a reason, but I think it's more of the fact that Gino's got a lot to say and he's too shy to properly communicate that. So they're just going around and around and around with problems. And I'm all for that. And here we are again. See, I knew there had to be more to this fight. They both had things on their minds that need to be expressed. He wants to talk about money and she needs to discuss their intimacy. See, it wasn't the vegetables this time. Well, that's Gino and Jasmine for you. If you did make it to the end of the video, thank you. And also feel free to hit a like and leave a comment for me. It really helps me out. And I'll see you guys next time on the next recap. Bye.